Hey friends, happy gratitude day. You know, it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving to focus and feel and appreciate all the awesome things that gratitude can do for your mind, for your emotions, for your manifestation. So I'm gonna run through a lot of different things here in this kind of little mini workshop. I have a fair amount of science and I've included the links in the description. And hopefully given it's Thanksgiving time when I'm recording this, this can offer you or anybody you know who might appreciate it a few really great tools and reminders to shift into a much more grateful state, uh, to have greater happiness, to have greater um, oomph and energy into your manifestations, and just to understand a little bit of brain science of this phenomenon which a lot of positive psychologists have talked to about over time. And it's really nice to understand things like that. So the first reference I found is in Harvard Health Publishing Medical School about how giving thanks can make you happier. And I'm not gonna read the whole article for you right now and I'm not gonna summarize it, um, but I'll just give you a, a brief snippet from it that when you focus on what you're grateful for, what you focus on what you appreciate, what you already have, maybe it's the room you're in, maybe it's the food you ate today, you know, even really simple things, you focus on that appreciation and whatever you think about and you feel good about, you embody those feelings in you. You know, we don't often consider if we see a movie that has really positive messages or a lot of anger in it that we feel those things, but our mirror neurons activate when we you know, see those images, when we take in that content. But if you have ever experienced affirmations, if you've ever practiced evoking a certain state of mind, or if you're a performer, if you've ever used a green room, you might know that you can evoke really any emotional state at will. Now, the difference between knowing this is possible and doing it all the time is a pretty significant difference. Um, and being able to do something, you know, like any skill, speaking Chinese, doing backflips, playing the piano, depends on how often you do it. And as Dr. Joe Dispenza often writes, um, the more you engross a neural circuit, the more you activate certain wiring in your brain, the more you do a certain thing, the easier that thing becomes. So feeling grateful, happy, nourished, happy for this video, happy for whatever good thing recently came into your life, you know, even pausing on the magic for a second is actually a really effective and simple technique. And there's so many people out there, myself included, who throughout our lives, we look to put something in our body, something we ate, drink, smoked, did to feel better without maybe even remembering or embodying in that moment, you could just hold on to gratitude. You could just do the practice. You could say, in this moment, I feel grateful for X. And I encourage you to do that right now. You know, maybe pause the video and just say one thing. And even if you don't feel a massive rush of gratitude, even if you're trying to fake it till you make it, you'll get yourself in this habit. And if you do feel it, if you do feel that rush of warm, yummy, good gratitude when you say, I am grateful for something, you know, think about that effect that has on your body, on your brain, on your mind, on your emotions, and on your life as a whole. Now, there's a lot out there about meditation. There's so much out there about routines. I have three and a half hours of daily routines. I routinely coach and mentor and support people in creating the optimal daily routines for them. And if you think about the practice of saying, I'm so, so grateful for you know, X, that is a routine element which really can take 10 seconds. Sure, there's always the really big idea of, oh, do a gratitude journal for 15 minutes. Oh, every day, write down 10 things you're grateful for. But if you wanna have a routine where you continuously feel good and happy and grateful for something in your life, just consider doing it once. Just consider that 10 seconds. You can do it anytime while you're standing in line, you know, while you're about to eat. And the more you do it, the more you'll likely think of doing it. So I'd like to encourage you to take on the practice of anytime you wanna feel better about anything in life, just offering gratitude towards a thing. You have a big challenge, thank you for this challenge so I can test and prove and build my strength. Something good happens, you naturally feel gratitude from it. Thank you for this experience. I'm anchoring in this gratitude verbally with that statement. So adding a little bit more science on why this matters, why it's not just a neat idea. Um, in the Greater Good magazine, science-based insights for a meaningful life. Uh, they talked about a lot of different studies and a lot of different brain science on how gratitude affects us. So one interesting thing is their first point is they said gratitude unshackles us from toxic emotions. And I'm gonna get into the brain regions and things like that in a second. But even just considering you know, the emotions that we can feel throughout the day, you know, there's a lot of stress in our modern life. A lot of us have obligations, goals, challenges, surprises, and those emotions are toxic. Whether you consider it cortisol, which 
causes inflammation, whether you consider you know, anxiety or depression or anger toxic from however you would define that word. You know, when you're in that state, when you're looping in those negative emotions, they're not good for you. They're not good for your body. They're not good for your mind. They're not good for your thoughts or decision making or planning. And I know you know this, right? But anytime you catch yourself in there, sure, you can reframe. Sure, you can look at the thing and deconstruct it and say, oh, well, here's the positive. But if you just pause and, you know, if you're a Harry Potter fan, say, cast your Patronus charm of gratitude. But if you just say, you know, I know there's something going on, which I have to deal with, but regardless, I'm so grateful for the sun, like my next good meal, my, my or David's awesome, wacky, colorful clothing, you know, whatever you would want to bring up, it can take you out of that loop. Now, this doesn't mean completely detaching. It doesn't mean avoiding. It doesn't mean the problem will magically go away. But there actually is also a fair amount of research that optimism gives you more creative options. It helps you think more creatively through the things in life that you're dealing with. So even just taking a moment away from feeling the problem, feeling the challenge, to feel a minute or two of gratitude, or again, even 10, 20 seconds, can actually help you overcome whatever you're working on. Um, now, another element that that article talks about is gratitude has lasting effects on the brain and the benefits take time. So especially now in this modern age, especially in the San Francisco Bay Area where I live, we all want a quick fix, right? There's so many plant medicines, so many drugs, so many people saying, oh, do this, it'll work instantly. There's a ton of YouTube videos based on that. But, you know, it takes a while to form the brain that you have, the thinking patterns, the thoughts, the emotions, the reactions that you have. So if you like the idea and premise of natural and holistic healing, building your strength, building your capabilities, naturally being in a positive, grateful state of mind, realize that a shift might happen over time. And if you're thinking, wow, I see David's videos, he's all cheery and positive, I wanna be like that all the time. You know, to be honest, I'm recording a video when I'm in a good state. I'm not recording a video when I'm full of, you know, the things in my own life I have to work towards. But if you see any positivity in the state I'm in now, and you see any positivity in yourself when you're at a better state, you know, consider working up to incrementally getting there more often. Maybe that means 10 hours a day, maybe 15, maybe if you're in a really tough spot and most days you go through are challenging, you're just like one or two hours of feeling better a day. Whatever it is, I'd encourage you to think about a rational set of goals to put around how you feel and how your brain works. And that goal is just very simply quantifying the amount of time you spend in a happy, grateful state during the day. Again, this isn't not looking at problems. This isn't denouncing anger or shadow or anything like that. But this is being able to be, you know, the you that you like to be. You know, all the things you have to do in life will, you know, likely still be there. But the more you practice this, the more it'll boost up. So a simple way of taking a big goal of saying feeling good, happy, and grateful for 10 hours a day is make that 100 day goal, you know, where every 10 days you work up to adding one more hour. And if you already feel good, happy, and grateful for three hours a day, great, you have a head start. You can re reduce it to 70. Now, of course, that's one structure. You don't have to take that exact thing into account. But if you're watching this video, if you're curious, how can you feel more grateful? You know, it's, it's do the work. One of my greatest teachers, Sifu Robert Brown, in the Berkeley School of Martial Arts in Michigan, um, you know, said, practice. We practice for progress, we read for inspiration. And another excellent teacher uh, named Raina said, most if not all change happens incrementally. So right now, think about maybe making a goal where you would have a gratitude practice for a certain number of days for a certain result. And just have that goal be realistic, understand what it can and can't do. It's not like smoking weed, it's not like having a drink, it's not like having anything on your wish list instantly appear, but it will shift you upwards and each time you do it, it will wire your brain to being in that shift. So the next thing I wanted to bring up is what does a grateful brain look like? This is a bit of the science. Uh, this is also from the Greater Good magazine at uh, University of California, Berkeley. And it said the research using FRI, fMRI machines with gratitude found that grateful brains showed enhanced activity in two primary regions, the anterior cingulate cortex, ACC, and the medial prefrontal cortex, or MFPC. And those areas are associated with emotional processing, interpersonal bonding, and rewarding social interactions, moral judgment, and the ability to understand the mental states of others. Now, now that we've just thrown the science out there, let's dig into these a little bit, because all of these are actually pretty meaningful in life uh, for you and people around you. 
So just going in the order they were shown, emotional processing. You know, whenever we hear about the idea of trauma, any type of trauma, any type of emotion that you can't fully let go of means it's not fully processed. It's in your system and likely you compensate in your life, personality and or body in some way to not you know, feel that trauma again to where you'd be overwhelmed. But processing that or anything in your life, even if, even if you don't feel you have any trauma or things that are, might be traumatic, you know, aren't in your current experience, anything that could stress you, anything that you need time to process. Think of, you know, the worst possible news that you could imagine. And think if you heard that news unexpectedly on a really important day in your life, if you could process it like that, like in three seconds, it, it would barely phase you, right? Now, that's wishful thinking for most of us. A lot of major events can take us minutes, hours, sometimes days, if not weeks or months, if it's a really serious event, like a major injury or a death of somebody close to you. Um, but, you know, ultimately, while we do want to process things thoroughly, we want to be able to process them, period, and quickly. So the fact that gratitude can support that is huge. Um, interpersonal bonding. You know, in our modern world where we spend so much time online, where community groups and group activities and just having bigger, like richer social interactions isn't as, you know, maybe robust as it could be, you know, we wonder why that is. And having a superpower to help you bond more quickly and more richly, maybe it's a romantic partner, maybe it's somebody at work or somebody you live with, the fact that gratitude can enhance that feels like a really nice life hack. If you think about it, interpersonal bonding just means feeling close, comfortable, secure uh, with somebody and being able to connect with them and you know, form a bond, um, form a trusting relationship, being honest and caring with each other. And there's a lot of exercises out there, but if the simple practice of gratitude can support that, even 10%, you know, that, that's a huge, huge benefit. So the next, uh, the next one's moral judgment. Um, and I think that that really speaks for itself. And then the ability to understand the mental states of others. Now, this is really huge in our current world. Um, autism and Asperger patterns, which I prefer to use as a word instead of disorder, um, you know, those patterns have been said to be on the rise. And unfortunately, meeting somebody who is empathic to you, who gets your state, who understands who and how you are and why you're that way, doesn't respond from a script in their mind or an agenda on their to-do list, but really fully gets you um, you know, that's so, so precious. And you being able to give that to others can help you be a better friend, better lover, parent, child, boss, you know, anything related to getting somebody else's world and not just coming from your own script, your own playbook. Now, the fact that gratitude has such incredible benefits in other areas, I was actually surprised to read that it boosts empathy. But the fact that it does takes, in my mind, it takes gratitude from a should or a good to a must. You know, there's so much research out there showing the people who are the happiest and most successful have a lot of really great relationships. And if gratitude can help with that, even indirectly, it seems kind of like a no-brainer to you know, practice it often. So two more research things to show you, and then I'm going to talk about manifestation. So one more is from NeuroImage, uh, which is a journal from El Xavier. And the article is called The Effects of Gratitude Expression on Neural Activity. And the main thing I wanted to relay is just one sentence at the end of the journal's abstract that says, subjects who participated in gratitude letter writing showed both behavioral increases in gratitude and significantly greater neural modulation by gratitude in the medial prefrontal cortex three months later. Okay, so that's a mouthful, so let's unpack that science. Um, actually going in reverse order, the fact that doing gratitude letter writing, which is very simply writing a gratitude letter to somebody, maybe it's delivered, maybe it's not, maybe that person isn't alive, but you want to express gratitude to them. Maybe they're in your life and you give them the letter and that shifts your relationship. But the fact that writing a letter and multiple letters, hey, thanks for the love. The fact that writing gratitude letters can affect you three months later is huge, right? Any of the short-term things that we can do to boost our mood or emotion, you know, listen to a good song, putting something in your body, doing a fun activity, you know, unless it's a really pivotal life event, um, you know, chances that it'll really affect you three months later, you know, it, it's kind of hit or miss. But the fact that gratitude letter writing can do this is huge. You know, most of us have the materials where we can write a letter. And if you weren't aware of this, actually physically writing something with pen and paper uses different parts of your brain than say typing it 
for doing a voice note, which if you're friends, you know I'm a huge fan of voice notes. Uh, and they have a lot of great reasons for genuine communication to be shared. But even just the idea of investing in your future self, you know, maybe three, five, six months from now, you're going to be going through a bigger challenge. You have a bigger goal and you want to be more bolstered. Well, the best way to change the future is start in the present, right? So by taking on gratitude letter writing, and, you know, you can go online and find a bunch of different exercises. I would recommend, you know, just a three paragraph gratitude letter, anything that comes to mind, just be sincere, clear and direct. And, um, you know, just doing something like that once a day, even for a week, will be a huge, huge shift. And the fact that that's kind of making deposits into your emotional bank account in the future, um, pretty nice. So one other thing I'd like to touch on from this article is um, behavioral increases in gratitude and significantly greater neuromodulation in gratitude by the part of the brain that processes it. So if you think about it, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. The more you do something, the easier it gets. And I know I said that in the beginning, but having the brain region, having the scientific reference, which I put in the, dis in the uh, description, and it really helps us go from a nice idea of positive or wishful thinking to something actually demonstrated, if not proven, um, by you know, a credible good research journal with you know, really nice science. So if we're thinking about what's the user manual for life, how do we live in the best way, you know, that's what you know, good research is, is meant to do. And gratitude is something most of us, if not all of us, can do most days of the week. All right, the last article before manifestation, uh, this is from Happify.com. Um, maybe not a Harvard uh, you know, type of a journal, but I, I think it's a pretty good site. And they have a lot of different types of things talking about how gratitude can boost your life. Um, but you know, if you're really thinking about a gratitude practice, they talk about the type of mental contrasting when you have a difficult habit that you're, a habit you're trying to build that's difficult. So let's just say for you or for a friend, the practice of gratitude to build a move is really tough. Let's just say for whatever reason, the mind is fixating on negativity, on things that you know you don't feel good, you don't feel happy, there's all these problems, and it can be difficult to shift into gratitude, much less form a habit where you do something you know, every day for you know 20 to 60 days, depending on how long you feel it'll take for the habit to set in, or you do it automatically. And with that, I'd just say, you know, life can be difficult. Let's be real with ourselves. It's difficult to live a life where you're feeling challenged all the time. And it's difficult if you feel you don't have the energy to do something like building a gratitude practice. It can be difficult to muster up the energy. But again, as my Sifu said, you know, there, there's two hearts. There's the heart of life continuing as it is and just being with it and the heart of exerting the effort to change it. But life's going to pass no matter what. So if you're going to experience something which you might consider hard or difficult, why not have that hardness or difficulty be something that takes you where you want to go? All right, so that's it for the science. Uh, that went a bit longer than I thought, but I hope it was interesting and useful for you. So gratitude and manifestation. Now, this is really fun. If you know my work, you know I'm very much into woo. And as much as I love mixing in the science, there's not tons of science which has linked gratitude to magic yet. And as I define magic in my book, Magic is Real, um, I consider magic the art and science of applied consciousness. So Arthur C. Clarke said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So any magic that I talk about isn't illusion or fantasy or you know, card tricks. It's actually using your consciousness to affect reality and using a fun word because you know, magic is really delightful. And there is a lot of real magic in this world by that definition. Um, and yeah, of course, there's a lot of fantasy too, which you should be you know, mindful to not take too seriously for how it can affect your life. But as far as manifestation, um, you know, I've talked a lot about this on their website, Magical Golden Age, and elsewhere. Um, but in short, manifestation is the art of making things happen. It's the art of raising the probability that certain things that you want will happen. So how do you boost manifestation with gratitude? Well, if you think about it, if you feel good about something, if you feel rich and happy and grateful, you're in a state where you're feeling positive emotion about something, generally in the present tense. You know, when we feel emotions about anything, maybe even a memory or a future thought, we're feeling it in that present moment. And so to our brains, to our experience, whatever we're visualizing is happening now in that moment. You know, there's so much research on the brain that says, if you're thinking about or remembering a certain thing, there's neural activity that shows, um, you know, very related behavior to if that thing was actually happening. And a lot of manifestation literature, a lot of manifestation practices say, 
you know, see the thing that you want as if it's happening right now and feel really good about it because those emotions charge it, those emotions bring it forward. So how is gratitude, as a number of manifestation teachers have said, one of the most strongest, if not the strongest force in the universe to support manifestation? Well, thinking about all the different positive emotions, let's just compare gratitude to joy, right? Say you can evoke either at will. Say you follow the stuff I've put out there, you have your own stuff, you've learned from somebody else, you mix and match, and you know that within a two minute warm up, say you're pretty good, you can feel joy or gratitude at will. You know, I can do that most times during the day unless I'm, you know, really haven't been keeping up my practices. And, you know, joy is great for manifestation. It's positive emotion. There's a lot we can talk about in the astral realm, and I, I do a lot of that in Wizard School on my website. But the difference between gratitude and joy is with joy, you can feel good about something and you can get lost in it, right? How often do we lose sense of time when we're really enjoying the moment? When we're really, you know, having a great time in a game with a partner, with a friend, looking at great art, and we just, you know, forget about everything. We're happy, we're joyful, and we're blissed out. But when you're grateful, you're actually focusing on the experience itself being in your life. And this is a really fine distinction. And I'd encourage you, if you're curious or not sure, to practice something where you take five minutes, you feel joyful about something, and then you take, you know, five, ten minutes to kind of cleanse the palate of your mind, and you take five minutes to feel really grateful about something, and see how it affects you differently. What I can say from experience is, you know, say, for example, my, my place in Palo Alto. I have a nice room. It's a decent size. There's all this great, beautiful, colorful art, and I can feel joyful here, but as soon as I stop focusing on joy, you know, that might be an association I feel when I come into my room, but it's not something that I would think about when I leave my room, you know, unless I'm, I'm daydreaming. But if I feel grateful for this room, then say, you know, some crap challenge is happening in life, and maybe I'm in my room or maybe I'm not, if I'm feeling grateful for my room, I'm remembering its presence in my life, and I'm filling myself with that reminder of, you know, I, this is something that I have, and I just feel good, and I feel nourished about it. So as far as how manifestation goes, you know, think of something you want for 2020. I know it's, it's coming up, uh, unless you're watching this on a recording. And if you want a certain thing to come into your life, if you're trying to manifest something that your rational mind believes is possible, and thus, hey, thanks for the love, everybody. Um, hey, you were too, that, Dasha. Thank you. I love you so much. And if you want something in 2020 to happen, and you want to, say, raise the probability through your manifestation practice, feeling gratitude can actually help you anchor seeing, feeling, visualizing it in the present moment. And as one of my really excellent teachers and friends, Justin Fairman, said, you know, when you use manifestation, one way of looking at that is holographic reality creation. You know, there's a ton of physicists who talk about reality as a hologram. You could talk about the veil of Maya. You could talk about you as oneness with a view of consciousness as an individual soul slash ego mind for the purpose of this life. And using intense visualization, you can see the timeline, the thought stream, the dimension, whatever you want to call it, of the reality which you want to create, of the experiences which you want to have. And feeling grateful, feeling present actually helps those things happen. You know, I have uh, certain manifestations of being in Venice next year. I really feel there's a lot about LA that can help serve the world. A lot of culture is created in LA and you can shift and help beliefs shift through creating culture. So I felt called to be in LA for a long time. And when I hold deep, strong, powerful visualizations, of being in LA and having a house gifted to me in Venice and a really beautiful place to live and kind of their spiritual community near a beach, in fact, with a zip line from our place, you know, down closer to the beach, you know, all those elements. And I know that sends out little manifestation waves. And, you know, during an experiment, I would do that every single day for three weeks. And uh, people in a certain startup hit me up and said, hey, do you want to, you know, be part of our company? One of the things we're doing is buying a house in Venice and giving, you know, free rooms to everybody on the core team. And at that time, I wasn't posting about Venice all the time. Uh, you know, maybe I mentioned it once briefly, but they, they weren't aware of that. It was clear. And it was really nice to see that universal wink of saying, hey, David, the probability of you living and being gifted a place in Venice, you know, just went up a bit. And, you know, having a place to live, an inexpensive, nice place to live is something I did right after college as well. Um, and, you know, there's so many elements of manifestation, so many things you can practice to boost it. But if you hold gratitude in your heart when thinking about something, you really can help strengthen your manifestation. Now, if what you're trying to manifest, if what you're intending and working on manifesting is something you don't feel gratitude for, 
if you feel that's being fake or you just can't access it, then think of a stepping stone. Think of something in your life which you could be grateful for. You know, maybe grateful for having legs. Maybe you take your legs for granted, assuming you have them. You know, there's usually something you can feel grateful for, some good thing in life. And if you can't think of anything, just, you know, maybe flip it. Think of all the things that could have gone wrong that didn't. You know, nobody hit you with a car today. You weren't poisoned today. You didn't have those major challenges come up. You can feel grateful for that. There's a lot of people who experience both of those things and not being included in those groups, even though this is kind of a roundabout way to get gratitude, get gratitude. Um, you know, it's, it's a technique that I think I really encourage you to try and to practice. So, you know, thanks so much for everybody tuning in. I'm gonna continue this because now we have seven, uh, you know, a fair amount of viewers. Um, so earlier in the video, we talked about the science, and just now for a while, we talked about the manifestation. I want to give you a routine and a practice for your life for taking in all the awesome stuff I shared about gratitude, how it changes, rewires your brain, how it supports positive emotions, how it aids in manifestation. So I'd encourage you, if you want a routine, a practice, something to follow, to have some way of taking notes, um, or note that it's 26 minutes and 15 seconds into the video, and you know, go back to that part to you know write this stuff down. So first, for any type of routine, um, hey Lisa, you you are here with me. It's all good. I appreciate you. Um, you know, if you want a certain routine, one of the most effective things I found is to actually write it or type it out and print it and put it on the wall. You know, just as a fundamental. You know, you see behind me, I have this beautiful poster of ISIS, um, and underneath there, I have these posters of these beings that I channel and one of myself. But also under this, I have the word consistency because I really care that anything I do, I practice with consistency. I wanna see it all the time. You know, in the other side of my wall, I have some aluminum foil on the wall, which is great for reflecting all the Christmas lights, uh, but it's a way for you to be able to draw on your wall if you don't wanna print something out or if you can't. So for this gratitude routine, if you really like it or any other routine that you have, I really encourage you to have it where you see it every single day until it becomes default. And the door leading out of your bedroom is great because that's something your eyes are you know, bound to see compared to, say, a random corner. So the first step is just to make a simple gratitude list, realizing that everything in this will boost your emotions as you do it. And I'd say a simple way to start is to 10 items, one sentence per item. Now, this doesn't have to be Pulitzer Prize winning writing or great grammar or anything else, but just list out 10 things. And any you know, self-judgment you might feel, just suspend all of that. Any personal inner critic stuff, just suspend that. Maybe write it on a to-do list of something to heal. Maybe you know, shoot me a DM and say, David, you know, I really want to feel grateful about something, but my inner critic, you know, put me down and put down my self-esteem. Cool. Let's let's work on that and clear that so you can remove that block and feel grateful. All right. So step one is having a gratitude list. I say step one A, if anything came up, is anything that came up in your mind, write down in a separate list of you know a to-do list for your next healing sessions. So the second thing for your gratitude list is go down it and really focus for each item on feeling gratitude for that item in your life. And a way to do this is visualize your life with that item and without that item and move the visualizations back and forth. You know, a good visualization exercise, um, you know, if you're very adept, if you're very skilled, I'd say 30 seconds. If you're newer or it's not a regular practice or visualizing is hard for you, I'd say do five minutes, you know, set an alarm on your phone so you don't have to look at your phone and you can focus completely in it and just really work on, you know, maybe putting your hands together in front of your heart if that feels nice and really work on feeling grateful in the sense. And if you don't, just say, I am grateful for X. And then shift visualizing your life with that thing present and with it not present. You know, everything in our lives can and, and may and will go away, including these bodies that we have and, you know, you'll still be there. Um, especially if you've had past life regression experiences or you know yourself as a soul, um, which, which I do and I see you. But when you visualize your life without the thing and you really let yourself not just say, oh, this, this, you know, this car, this job, this room, this food, this person is gone, really you know, see your life with it not present and consider how that feels. And consider, wow, there's some emptiness here. You know, I wish I wish that thing were here. And then it comes back and you're like, oh, wow, thank you. I'm so glad I have that. Now you can do this in reverse. If there's something challenging you that you want to win, you'd feel grateful for it leaving. That is a type of banishing manifestation, uh, which, you know, we, we could talk about in another session. 
Um, but that's the second practice, is actually visualizing each thing on the list. Now, if you need five minutes to visualize it well, you don't have to go through all 10. Um, but depending on how much you feel you need a gratitude practice, I'd, I'd recommend you invest between five and 20 minutes every day. Um, you know, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling angry for a majority of the day, I'd say, you know, try to up it to more than 20 minutes. Maybe that's a goal. Maybe even looking at your list is, you know, enough. Um, but I'd say really do your best to really feel this practice. Now, another way to feel gratitude beyond just saying it is actually rewriting your list. If you say, I feel grateful for, you know, X, that puts something in your system. But if you write it down, that instills it in another deeper way. So if you're working on feeling, if you want to feel it more, actually rewrite that list. That's another component. Cool. So for gratitude and manifestation, the fourth thing I can recommend is considering something that you want to appear and not just having gratitude for it, but have grateful for everything that will help you manifest it on the plane of action. You know, most types of manifestation do require physical action in the physical plane to happen. They require you to do things. We're in these bodies. We're in this time, space, reality. You generally need to do things for your manifestations to come about. If you're a very skilled wizard or life's circumstances are already supporting the manifestation, it's likely you'll need to do less. Uh, there was a time I wanted a co-founder for a certain business I was running. I did about mm, maybe four hours of manifestation over the course of a week. Uh, and somebody literally knocked on my door. They were <laughs> invited over for an event by somebody else. I didn't even know they were coming by. They knocked on my door. We talked. Within a week, we had some very deep discussions. And a week after that, they were a co-founder. <laughs> You know, that was really great. It took almost no action on my part. But usually, the things I want to manifest in the world require me going out, talking to people, taking certain actions, posting online. You know, there's, there's a Lakshmi temple I've been meaning to build. Uh, it's part of one of four life missions that came to me during a really powerful third eye opening workshop. And building a temple for Lakshmi isn't about worshiping a Hindu deity. It's about seeing the frequency of abundance, the frequency of wealth, the frequency of being taken care of and having all the resources you need, and that for the people around you and the world you are around you. So there's not so much suffering from debt and scarcity or scarcity and all the ways we see it so that we can appreciate what we have and learn to create more really effectively and efficiently. So that's in my book. It's something I do you know, kind of often, seeing that temple. And one time after a very, very deep connection with Lakshmi, whether you consider it as I do, the goddess Lakshmi, or if you're monotheistic, the aspect of the all one divine God that is about wealth and abundance, or if you're an atheist or an agnostic or you want other terms, the aspect of your higher self of reality, that's abundance, just given a name and a face to make it easier to grasp and understand. So after about eight minutes of deeply connecting with that essence of Lakshmi, I'd say about three, four seconds after it was finished, I got a call from a really good friend uh, sharing a few things about his life and a few relationships in his life, uh, saying, hey, you know, there's, there's somebody else who wants you to build a temple of Lakshmi, and uh, I might be able to help you build it, and I very might likely be able to fund it. And this is really cool, you know, having somebody say, I want to help fund you building a temple um, without me having to go on a huge campaign or do a huge fundraiser or a huge, you know, viral crowdfunding thing. I just had a very deep connection with the essence. I had the other work I've done in the past and it just came in. And that was really awesome seeing that manifestation successful. Now, during the manifestation practice with Lakshmi before I held gratitude, during my other manifestation practices, I had held gratitude. But even still, you know, that temple is going to take a lot of phone calls, meeting, planning, you know, lots of work to actually have that be built. The actions in this world are going to need to be taken. But the gratitude boosted manifestation at least helped it get on track and helped raise the probability of it occurring. So that was a little over half an hour so far. Uh, you know, I started this video, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll do about 15, 20 minutes and uh, a lot more came through. Um, I hope this was really valuable for you and really interesting for you. Uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, feedback, requests, please post them below. Uh, one of my goals for you know now, continuing to 2020, is to make a video every day, at least a one-minute video if it's Instagram, but ideally something longer on Facebook Live because there's a great community of us here. Um, and then I share that stuff in a lot of my other channels. So if you appreciate what I do and you'd like to support me doing it, 
so I can live a life studying this stuff, practicing this stuff, finding the best masters around. I'd be very grateful for any support that you want to share. Um, you know, it's a big deal to work on your own um, supporting and teaching concepts of spirituality and ways of uplifting life. So a few ways you can support me doing that, if, uh, if it feels right, is one, you can just share this video with a friend or comment below just to help more people see it, help it be more visible. Two, if you feel abundant in the energy of money and you feel uh, aligned sharing or sending that, you know, that's, that's always welcome. I'm always very grateful to receive that and use that responsibly. Um, I put that towards uh, building of temples and things like that. And three, you know, there's a lot of other stuff I have at magicalgoldenage.com. Uh, if you go there and subscribe, you can get um, you know, newsletters and heads up for videos like this and other things. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, a Patreon, and Instagram, and all that other stuff, and I'll throw the link in the description in just a second. Um, and if you have anything else that you can think of, a crystal, kind words, a thought, an intention, I'd be really grateful to receive it. And I share that not from need, but from a state of alignment. Um, you know, in, in this life, in this reality, as I'm here serving from my aligned purpose, um, you know, this is what I came to earth to do. This is what feels right for me. Even if I have to spend time during my day, you know, doing other things to support myself, I'm here for this and I'm grateful to be here for this. And if you consider karma, if you consider the world that we want to shift to, helping each person who has a purpose to support the world, support humanity's awakening, raise the quality of living for, you know, everybody or as many people as possible, create unique discoveries and innovations and inventions and just contribute, you know, we do that by supporting each other with really whatever we have available and whatever feels right. So with that, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope this was valuable to you in some way. And, um, you know, I wish you everything you wish for yourself. Much love.